To prime the fuel injected Lycoming 360 engine, we first turn on the electric fuel pump. Now very carefully watch the fuel flow gauge here as we advance the mixture. This is telling us the engine's being primed. After a few seconds, we pull the mixture back and then turn off the electric fuel pump. The engine is now primed and ready to start. After shooting that earlier video of us cranking the engine, one of our developers, Chris Joff, wanted me to show everyone a little peek inside our actual AccuSum engine. So I'm going to crank this over just one more time, and when I do, look at these four bars. These show all four piston positions during their compression stroke. Now we let the aircraft sit for quite a while, so the primer has now evaporated. Now here we go. It is this compression that the starter has to overcome. When we release the starter, it's the compression that wiggles the prop. You see, that was the number two cylinder that stopped that prop. Okay, I think it's time we give our poor little AccuSim starter a break because it does heat up and it can burn out. So let's finally start this engine up. Again, we prime the engine. Throttle cracked, mixture off, apply brakes. In the real aircraft, we yell clear prop, scan the area, then engage. Mixture in, oil pressure up. Okay, since the engine is cold, we'll idle at just below 1000 RPM. And we lean the mixture to help keep our spark plugs from fouling. Just like all of our AccuSum planes, we measure the actual warm-up times, and the Cessna 172 with its Lycoming 360 is no exception. Because right now, we sit here and wait and just watch the needle for any movement on that oil temperature before we apply any power. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you here. Watch the ammeter when I turn the alternator on. AccuSum's electrical system is charging the battery. Over time, as the battery completely charges up, that needle will drop, just like your car. Also, after starting a cold engine, as it warms, it's normal to keep making minor adjustments, pulling the throttle back to maintain the same RPM. This is not unique to aircraft engines, but true with most engines with a manual throttle control. During our flight testing, we measured exactly how much throttle was needed to get the aircraft moving on the tarmac. How much it takes to move. We also measured the maximum turn rate at various speeds. Turn without brakes. The nose wheel on the Cessna 172 is moved by springs, and you need to use differential braking to make any kind of sharp turns. When taxiing, you usually have the wind at your tail, which means to keep the plane at a reasonable speed, you sometimes have to choose between either idling too low or using your brakes more often than you'd like. This is sometimes a painful balance for an aircraft owner because you don't want to have foul plugs and you also don't want to have your brakes wearing out too fast. It took a lot of testing to get this just right with our AccuSim C172. We measured the 172R's acceleration and its braking. So let's run it up. If an engine idles too low, especially with a rich mixture, lead in the fuel can collect and foul the spark plugs. For this reason, many flight schools insist that while on the ground that you idle above a certain RPM and lean aggressively while taxiing. Let's demonstrate what can happen if we completely ignore that advice and do the opposite. Now keep in mind that on this aircraft, we have a dual ignition system. In the event that one system fails, the other will keep the engine running. 
This also means that fouled plugs may go unnoticed until you do a mag check. Now right now I know we have some plugs that are fouled because I actually peeked inside the engine. Now if you listen very carefully, you'll notice that this engine is not quite running smoothly. But just like the real thing, it can be very difficult to know for sure. So let's do an engine run up and check our max. Okay, we're gonna go to 1800 RPM. Let's check our left mag. Okay, with a very slight drop. Right mag. All right. Now we have some foul plugs on the right side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase our throttle to full power. Try to clear these uh, plugs out. Left mag, right mag. All right, we're still fouled. What you can also do is you can lean the mixture a bit. You gotta be careful uh, with your engine temps. See the power coming down. Hold it. All right, let's try it again. Left is good. Right is pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Now let me just quickly explain something about the spark plugs. Now, A2A Simulations is very fortunate to have picked up a major sponsor, Champion Aerospace. We have both the traditional massive style spark plug and also the newer fine wire style spark plug. The fine wire plug is very resistant to spark plug fouling, but it's not a common plug. So we recommend to our customers that you fly your C172 trainer with the massive style first and develop proper spark plug management techniques. Both 74 Hotel and 35 Hotel are model 172 R's with a coarse fixed pitch propeller. While 67 Quebec is a Skyhawk SP which comes with a much flatter fixed pitch propeller. This means the Skyhawk SP will run at a higher RPM with a little more power whereas the 172 R's with the coarser prop will run at a lower RPM and also be a little quieter. All right, we're lined up on the runway. We're gonna throttle up, full power, brakes on, see what the, uh, what RPM we reach. We're at 2100 RPM, just about 21. So 160, 107 dB. Here we go. Now let's run our Accusim C172R up to full power. We're also seeing about 2100 RPM. Now let's take advantage of the fact that we're in a simulator and let's just throw on that flatter S prop while the engine is still running. hear that? We're generating a lot more power because we're up at 2300 RPM now. It's the same engine, just a different prop. Okay, let's put our stock prop back on and take off. Before we do, I just want to show you something really neat here. Now listen very carefully when we put our headsets on. The sound isn't just turned down, it's actually muffled. All right, let's get rolling. Remember, the uh, Cessna has the spring-loaded nose wheel. Sometimes it can take some getting used to if you come from other aircraft with a direct uh, connect. Now we're just going to let the plane take itself off. Just slightly. The lightest back pressure. And the plane just launches itself. And this plane wants to fly, no doubt about it. All right. And we pitch and trim for 80 knots indicated. And away we go. Okay, before we end this video, I just want to give you a heads up on some new features. This is a full-featured Bendix King avionics suite. And we're currently working on dedicated tutorial videos for each of the components. And for those who like to fly at night, we have some beautiful dynamic lighting. You can adjust the lighting on your radio stack. 
There you go. The fuel selector on the floor. The instrument panel. And the bright fluorescent light under the glare shield. But it doesn't stop there. You also have two switchable floodlights. So you can have a nice dim cockpit. Or if you want it brighter, you can turn them both on. As you can see, this Cessna is no slouch when it comes to its nighttime cockpit environment. Moving on, we have three GPS configurations. One option is with the Garmin GNS 400. We can take it out and fly with our traditional DME. And while we have it up, just take a close look at those LEDs. It's a true marriage between beautiful modeling and function and you can use the entire 100-page Bendix King Manual to operate this autopilot. It's that complete. And the third option is to use a portable suction-mounted Garmin GPS Map 295. Okay, as you can see in this little Cessna 172, there is a lot to cover. So keep an eye out for the third part of this development video and more videos to come.